Hello again, and welcome to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy. I'm your host, certified sex therapist Lori Watson, author of Wanting Sex Again, and blogger at Psychology Today and WebMD. And I have with me Dr. Adam Matthews, my co-host, who's a couples therapist, psychotherapist, and president of NCAMFT. Foreplay is dedicated to helping couples keep it hot. Each episode, we cover an aspect of sex that impacts your sex life and something that you can relate to. So if you find our discussions helpful, please give us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. We would love it if you would tell a friend about us. You can find us also on the web at foreplayrst.com. And if you have a comment or a topic that you'd like us to talk about, we'd love to hear from you. Please send them to us at info at foreplayrst.com. Thanks for listening. Now on to today's topic. Hello. Hi, Lori. How are you? How was your weekend? It was great. Um, I had my college son home, and that was always a wonderful thing to see him. You love it when your sons are home. I do. I do. He has this, like, massive beard. Uh, You know, it's like this really college-age kid beard that makes him look like a crazy man. And he's going, he's going to a job fair. And, I mean, I really try to stay out of it, but this one I've been nagging about. It's yeah. like, please, please get that trimmed. And he, fortunately, on his own, he got his hair cut, which yeah. is really cute. And the girl was like this men's specialist hair stylist. So yeah. she trimmed she the sides. So it's still really long, let me, uh, but he's got a new suit. It's a good thing. Let me ask you, what? Okay. What do? how do women feel about the trend in the last five years? five, six years toward, toward bringing beards back, like, like, are, are like, like, where are, what, where, what are, where, what, are, women where, where, where are women are feeling facial hair? I'm sure it varies. I'm sure it varies. I like beards. You like Adam's beards? Adam's got a beard. I've got a beard, but yeah, I don't have, I don't have the long cute. crazy, I don't have the long hunter crazy man well, yeah. beard. Like, yeah, I have friends that have that. No. Probably. Probably not as cute. You know, I, I have a patient who is like scruffy and his mother is so funny was like saying, you know, oh, you got to shave or something. And I'm, I'm just like, oh, no, I just nagged my son to shave his beard. But Scruffy is totally in, too, right? I yeah. mean, it's hot. Scruffy is hot? Scruffy is hot. Right. Yeah, it looks like not, the man not, who... Not neat and trimmed, but no. a little scruffy. Yeah, you know, okay. kind of unshaven, two days unshaven that, okay. you know, he's been working out and... See, that is hot. so hard to maintain. I don't think, like... <laughs> That actually, yeah, that's right. that's that right. actually takes to be to be the right to be the right level of scruffy. <laughs> that takes more work than than either being clean shaven or having a, a bowl, or having a beard. Yeah. Like that is that is the top level of preening, honestly. So if yeah. you see the guy with with the two day scruff, he has taken a long time to look. The, he's the taken a long time to look that way. The, like the product in his hair. Yeah, that, that's the, a serious look. The, he has he has and gone. the blue jeans and the black. The jacket, yeah. you know, he, like he is, um, he is probably the blazer. Ripped, he's yes. probably had to rip his own. He's and had to rip his own jeans. That's hot. <laughs> uh, okay, all right, Derek. Oh, okay, Derek, okay. I hope you're. T- I, hope, I hope you're taking. The, I hope you're taking notes right now. Laura's uh, getting a little, is, a little my, flush. My husband is serious hot. Yeah, oh, there you go. absolutely. Okay, so right. we're going to talk about how to increase sexual frequency today. How to get more of it. Yeah, that's what everybody says that they want. More men, but women too. I hear a lot of women oh, saying days, that they are not um, getting enough sex in their coupled relationship. That's and, right. Or say, like, so it's coming from both sides, honestly. Both sides. Yeah. So I read this study, and we're going to credit them. It's by Schoenfeld, Loving Pope, Houston, and Stolhofer. And it was just published in 2017 in the journal, uh, The Archives of Sexual Behavior. Uh, and I, you know, we... I do kind of want to bring people good research mm-hmm. about what's out there because people are studying these things. It's not just opinion. It's not just what we're saying. But we're, we're not just bring making you, stuff up. We're yeah. not just making it up. Okay. <laughs> ba- basically, this study was, you know, does sex really matter? They wanted to examine the connections between behavior, frequency, satisfaction, sexual satisfaction, and marital satisfaction. The assumption is if the marriage has more sex, then people are happier. Hmm. Was that true? That was not true. Really? Really. So the higher higher sex, more sex, was, did not equal happy marriage? It did not. Okay. So everything, all the other things did kind of correlate with what you would expect, that positive behavior from both partners, of course, made for more happiness, uh, more marital satisfaction, that meaningful sex was what made for both 
sexual satisfaction and marital satisfaction. So did they talk about the difference between what meaningful sex meant? Yes, they did. What, um, meant, what constituted meaningful okay, sex? Okay, so meaningful sex was basically connected emotional sex. And this was not just for women. It was for men as well, which I think... You know, we think of it as, okay, women want it to be meaningful and men want it to be, you know, hot and fast. A lot of women, we like it hot and fast too sometimes. It's not, it's not that. I think it's, it's dicey when we talk about gender differences, but this really did talk about some differences. And, but in this case, both genders preferred sex that was emotionally richer. Mm. So um, what we've been saying all along, they proved our points. They proved our points, which yeah, is good. kind of why I like the study. Yeah. But, okay, to get more sex, though, let's say that that is still a goal. There was one correlate with that, and that was the husband's positive behaviors toward his wife were tied to higher sexual frequency. Mm. So this was, to me, a little bit of bad news for my female patients who want more sex because there was no correlate with her positive behaviors toward him that increased hmm. or seemed to be able to increase sexual frequency. So it, it fell it, on the It husbands. was very dependent. Yeah, yeah, it was very dependent on his positive behaviors. And the other problem was, is once the marriage was distressed, his positive behaviors didn't necessarily turn it around. Hmm. Yeah, so this is like a maintenance thing. Once the marriage is good, his positive behaviors correlated with more sexual frequency. Hmm. That that puts a lot of pressure on 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 the guy on the guy it seems right. It did. In the and, very I beginning. mean, in fact, Gottman's research uh, he he was quoted in here with other research, and I'm sorry I don't have the whole study, but it was him and a partner. But basically said that, you know, a marriage the the strongest predictor of marital unhappiness was male ne negativity. Hmm. Female negativity was not the strongest indicator of unhappiness in the marriage. It was his unhappiness, his um, negative behaviors that most strongly correlated with overall marital unhappiness. How does that make sense for you just from a pra from a common sense standpoint? Like, I mean, does it, when you think about your couples, so I'm trying to think of the couples that come see me in my head and other couples that I know, that seems a bit counterintuitive to the I to ideas about that it takes two to tango, so to speak. That, it, that it's both involved. So, like, how would you explain so, that from a layperson's that's perspective? A, that's a great question, Adam. I, I think that, I mean, the study did talk about how everything impacted everything. So, mm -hmm. certainly male negative behavior impacted female negative behavior. Female neg negative behavior did impact male negative behavior and, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So, let me answer that, the first part of your question, though. Uh, you said, you know, why would it be the male negative behavior that's more powerful and I think that in part, oftentimes men do have more power in the ha, traditionally have had more power in the marriage, mm. and also they're they're less responsive to their wives' sort of behavior or emotional states. You know, so if it's if you're a guy, either you misread, which might be good. Like if she's in a bad mood, you just might not notice that that in some ways it's like he's not as attuned to her bad moods, or you misread it. I mean, that could go the other way as well, right? You, right. you misread some, just a look or whatever, and you know, and then you're off to the races. But overall, him having traditionally more, more power and not being as responsive, his withdrawal, hmm. uh, uh, it's typical for a man, right? In yeah. attachment theory, it's more men who would be withdrawing so their defense structure says, I'm just, I'm not going to be as impacted by you. I'm mm -hmm. not going to care as much about if you, you know, many things, your needs, your negative criticism of me. And so they, in some ways they set up this little barrier. They don't feel as impacted by it and therefore they're not quite as unhappy. Hmm. So yeah. is that, let me make sure I'm understanding. It was a confusing study, so well, we got to sort of things, it out. One of the things that I hear in that is, this correlate sometimes that people throw out there of the person that cares the least in the relationship has the most power. Yes. Is that similar to what we're, yes. what we're talking I, about? I mean, I think there is something, right? If you're the one longing, you're the pursuer or the anxiously attached person, 
and your partner is withdrawing and says, you know, I don't really care about something, then it's, it's hard to make them be motivated to come in your direction, right? So that, men, men say this most traditionally uh, about women. Well, she doesn't care about sex, therefore she's controlling the relationship. So, so because men traditionally fill fill that role, they tend their their behaviors toward their spouse tend to have more impact than the mm -hmm. female partner's positive moves toward toward their their husbands. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So that's right. When he, when he's actually moving toward her. It tends to create a climate, a climate that is conducive to her wanting more sex. This is this is a crazy one, but one of the things they did when they were matching things up in this research was that the couple who was the male pursuer, mm -hmm. the guy who moved toward her in terms of positive behaviors, and the female who was negative, had the most sex. Hmm. <laughs> so yeah. if you're married to a kind of a witchy bitchy woman. Uh, and you're, you're willing, you a lot stay of sex. positive, <laughs> you might be having a lot of sex. I'm not sure that they answered why that is. I, I yeah. think my own guess was that maybe he's he connects sexually. So in order to restore balance, he uses his warmth and affection, and affection, um, you know, to yeah. to get back to her, to connect, yeah. reconnect with her. So his bid is uh, for reconnection is more sexual. Yeah. I, so I, he's. You know, there's a lot more sex. Yeah, I would wonder too if that if that in part is because if he's exhibiting positive behaviors and she is being more negative, that what he's really conveying is an acceptance, no matter how you are, that he's being positive in the face of the most negativity that she can throw. So, so maybe he's a securely attached person. Yeah, uh, and we're not sending this message out there that we approve of this or we're suggesting no. you know anything about an outcome here. We're just talking about the study. Yeah. I mean, it was a very interesting twist to things. But I think maybe, and we can talk about, maybe talk about this after the break, is that for men, I think a lot, they may hear, well, it's all, it's dependent on me to be positive. And they it's go, all well, my I, thing. well yeah. I am positive. Right. right. And I am doing that. And that's still not, I'm not still not getting anything from it. So maybe we can talk about some ways okay. that either they mentioned or some other ideas that we have about how men can be more positive or their partners to be able to maybe increase the frequency and the sexual satisfaction in their relationship. Okay, this is Fort Play Radio Sex Therapy. We'll be right back. Wanting Sex Again. How to Rediscover Desire and Heal a Sexless Marriage by Certified Sex Therapist Lori Watson. Each chapter is designed to fix one of the problems that cause low libido, from early marriage through the childbearing years, even all the way through menopause. I've also had men read it and tell me that for them it was the most hopeful thing they read about resolving sexual problems. Look for Wanting Sex Again on Amazon.com. You can also talk to Lori Watson for therapy in person or via Skype. I offer couples counseling and sex therapy, and I think about both aspects of the relationship, emotional intimacy and sexual technique, and that combination together helps marriages be happy. Improve your sex and improve your relationship with Awakening Center for Couples and Intimacy. Find out more at awakenloveandsex.com. Awaken what's possible. It is one of my great joys in life to be able to really help individuals and couples find strength in their relationships and really find hope again. Licensed marriage and family therapist, Dr. Adam Matthews from Matthews Counseling. I work with a wide variety of issues, including depression and anxiety, marital issues, issues with adolescence. I believe that therapy should be designed around you, that it should be personalized to who you are and to your unique situation. Therapy is available in office, online, and by phone. I want therapy to be comfortable for everyone. At our office, you'll find that we sit around a fireplace in deep, comfortable chairs, look at the problem differently, and offer practical solutions for you to take home and utilize outside of the therapy room. Schedule today and rediscover hope. You can find me on the web at matthewscounseling.net. Matthews with one T. You can contact us through email or phone and find a lot of resources on our website, matthewscounseling.net. Back 
back with Four Point Radio Sex Therapy. Lori Watson, Dr. Adam Matthews. Okay, so we're talking about this study, Does Sex Really Matter? And especially about how to increase sexual frequency. And we've said that it's a husband's positive behaviors. I will say that marital satisfaction for the male was the highest when a female was physically affectionate, mm-hmm. you know, when she, she was touchy, and also when she displayed receptivity to sexual advances. Yeah, so positive behaviors, if we're talking about positive behaviors that men need to exhibit, right, if they're, if it, and maybe, do you think it's a fair, based on the study, Lori, to say, if everything affects everything, but it sounds like this, this is a place to start for a couple and for a man in particular, right? That mm-hmm. it's not going to be everything. It's not going to be a silver bullet, but it at least um, gives you a place to begin to look at it if your, relation, if your sexual relationship is not what you want it to be, right? Is, right. That, is that a fair right. thing to I, say, you think? Uh, yeah, I do. I mean, I think what I'm going to hear is a lot of protests, and I, I get it. It's like the guy will say to me, you know, she's nagging me to death. She wants me to take out the garbage. Okay, now I'm taking out the garbage. There ain't no more sex than there was, you know? He's like, this did not help Lori. And I think the problem is, is by the time, if you've let things go too long, you need to come back to the relationship in a way that's connected. You know, you you have to kind of, this works in the beginning. And the good thing is, is frankly, one of the things was the way we judge our own happiness in relationship is how we're treating our partner. Hmm. So if we're treating our partner positively, we personally feel better about the relationship. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's... So it impacts our partner. You know, we tend to mirror each other. Overall, you know, when we act positively to our partner, it sets an atmosphere that's more conducive for them to act positively toward us. Hmm. So that, I mean, there's power in this, even if, you know, things have gotten off track. But that may then does signal to me what you're saying there. It does signal to me that I may have to do positive things even when I don't feel like them. That's right. That even That's when... That's right, to get it back on track. To get it back on track, I'm not, I'm not going to necessarily feel like it. Uh, my motivation may not fully be there, but if I can bring my... If I can soothe myself enough to begin to do those things, that it can begin to turn around. So what are some things that you think men can do some positive behaviors when we say positive behaviors what kind of things are we talking about okay so they they listed and they tracked in this study and it was a really well done longitudinal study i think they tested it like you know one year end of two years and then like end of 13 14 years or something and they really they kept track of these positive behaviors so they They would interview these people on a day-by-day basis for a series of days and have them keep track of this. So the positive behaviors that the study was tracking was saying, I love you, making your partner laugh. Not as easy. Not everybody's funny. (laughs) Yeah, I I do have a funny husband. I'm, I'm so grateful. Engaging in physical affection outside of intercourse. So touching, holding hands, hugs, kisses, all that. Expressing approval or offering compliments. I would, you know, I hear that so much. People say, my partner just doesn't appreciate me. And, mm-hmm. You know, offering approval, like, wow, you, you're so great with the kids, or I appreciate so much you going to work, that job you hate, or mm-hmm. I appreciate how much money you make, or, you know, whatever it is. I appreciate yeah. all this. I think, and I think, too, like compliments, they can be difficult sometimes, especially when you're not, I think a lot of men don't, compliment their spouse unless they just feel it they feel like it just welling up within them like an emotional surge or something and that doesn't ever happen Mm -hmm. um but i think complimenting your partner on who she is as well is important not just on what she does or how she looks or how she looks right those are important important, right but yeah yeah um i was at a, a couple's workshop this weekend and they each had to they had to get up and turn and share one positive thing about their spouse mm-hmm. that they that they really liked. The first guy got up there, and he said, "Well, of course, my wife is smoking hot." And they they all laughed. Everybody laughed. And he went on to say some other things. 
Well, then the next guy got up there and said, well, my wife is smoking hot, too. And then <laughs> all the guy. rest of the men Smart were tra- all the rest of They're the men trapped. were trapped. They, they, had they, they had to they had to say it. But <laughs> even even in that, like, I don't know how you feel about this, but the, the women's faces still seem to light up even when they were making in, it. As in, in jest, even, or just because they had to. Even when they were obligated to say I, it, it still I'd seemed to go a long way. take that just because you had to. I would absolutely take there that. Okay. Sorry. Go so, ahead. so other positive behaviors is that they did something nice for their partner. They talked about the day's events. They shared emotions, feelings, and or problems, and they had sex with each other. So, oh, I mean, notice that all of these things like don't cost any money. Wait, 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 wait. Right? Wait, wait, wait. They don't cost any money. But I'm, I'm confused, though. One of them was the couple had sex. That's a positive behavior? Yeah, that's counted as a positive behavior. Okay, well, well if you're trying for, to... For both genders, it was considered a positive behavior. Oh, that is so con- that is so confusing. Well, because this was a study on not just frequency, although we know our listeners are interested in that, but it was also concerned with satisfaction, sexual and marital satisfaction, and the impact of positive behaviors sexual frequency, sexual satisfaction on marital satisfaction, and vice versa. Right. How did all these things impact each other? And, and what stood out as significant? Right. It, I guess it's just, I, I can get that. I think I'm just, it, it would just be a confusing message for men to hear that a positive behavior that you can have to have more sex and more meaningful sex is to have sex. So I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how to, how to reconcile that so in. so think about the a culture of a marriage or a partnership where where sex is happening mm-hmm. i mean it's it's a good feeling and right. i mean ironically right those good feelings feed off each other right i think also you could say you know a, a person who a partner who says yeah you know i have orgasms i have sex all the time but there's this growing distance between us mm-hmm. you know because somehow or another they're not connecting, it doesn't necessarily go in in terms of wanting them to have more frequent sex. So so that's the correlate. It's not just the positive behaviors. It's also the sexual satisfaction which comes which comes when they're emotionally connected. So emotional having emotionally emotional connected sex. Yeah, emotionally connected connected sex. It would seem to me then different. though that, that what that that when you have that positive behavior, you have to follow it up with the other ones. Right. To be able to then have more emotionally right. connected sex. So it, it's all, it seems like it's all going to feed itself, right? Right. And the one killer was, was that, okay, so let's talk about negative behaviors. What are they? Behaviors that take away. That take away, right. Seemingly bored or uninterested. That and the man is bored or interested in his spouse. Exactly. Yeah. Or not, it's not just male. This is oh, also, this is, this is we, all they manage behaviors. both ways, both directions, male to female, female to male. These were all heterosexual couples. Or when the conversation was dominated, when they showed irritation or impatience. Oh my goodness, he's not guilty of that. Yeah. When they criticized and complained, or failed to do something when they were asked, right? That passive aggressive thing. Mm -hmm. Or they did things that were annoying, like bad habits and stuff like that. Those are negative behaviors. Okay. But basically, you know, a male who who had a temper shut down shut down everything. Uh, like, like like a really big negative behavior would be an explosive anger, 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 anger angry yeah. reaction. Yeah, and that like killed everything. Not anger as an emotion, but ma- anger as a reaction. Yeah. 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 Or a temper, which yeah. is sort of anger out of control. I think that yeah. was that was the killer. That uh, well, the and way that, I understood it. In and that movie. was mostly exhibited by a man. Yeah. By yeah, way. male. And again, this is this is gendered. I mean, mm-hmm. this study showed things that were different uh, between the sexes. Yeah. Yeah. So on that on that list, Lori, which ones for you are the most difficult you think for men to do or the positive behaviors? And which ones do you think that it's you know, I, a struggle? I think that affection outside of the bedroom, outside of um, sexual intercourse or, or having sex seems to be really hard. And you know, when I see a man who is not touching his wife, it is a really big problem. Mm-hmm. You know, like the women will say, you know, he only touches me when he wants to have sex. It, it has to be a climate of warmth and affection mm. uh, for sex Where sex to is not expected. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of men, and I think this is culturally problematic, right? Because men don't allow themselves to feel the need for touch. 
they translate that all sexually. Mm. So they may not reach out and touch and feel okay about that, but then she's starving and she says, all you want is sex. You know, you only touch yeah. me when you want sex. That's real toxic. I think, I think that's hard though. I want to defend men a little bit on that because it's, I think it's really hard because if, when I touch my partner and it led to sex, I would be really happy. Yeah. I don't necessarily expect sex, mm-hmm. right? And I'm talking generally here, but um, I think men get confused sometimes because they don't expect sex all the time. But when they are physically affectionate, their wife may pull back because they think that he's just wanting sex. Yeah. And then on yeah. top of that, there's a physical response that happens to um, men for when men. Touching when touching their wives. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, well, when like... If my wife is physically affectionate with me, most of the time I'm going to get an erection. Right. 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 Especially if it's any kind of intimate touch. I'm not talking about just walking. And if she looks at you and says, oh, see, all you want is sex. That's right. It's not fair. It's like you can't control what your body does. Yeah. How your body reacts. I think that's a confusing, there's a a confusing message there um, for a man that I don't know that we know fully how to overcome that except by saying, uh, Men are going to get erections. They're going to look yeah. like they, they're they going to be ready for sex. Mm-hmm. At the same time, I don't know that all men always expect it at every, phys- at every physical touch. Right, they either, can't control so. that. But I, I still think, you know, lots of touching, you know, maybe it's holding, maybe it's things that turn you on. But, you know, you can walk by your wife in the hall and, you know, grab her a little bit. Or you can, oh, be careful where you mm-hmm. grab her. Respectfully. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> women are going to kill me when they hear that. Um, but I, I mean, like, spank her <laughs> gently <laughs> on, on her ass. <laughs> but also say, you know, maybe it's also a str- <laughs> Okay. I, I think... <laughs> maybe, maybe we translate what you're saying. I think for some, help, in some cases that could me. be okay. Help me, I'm in trouble. I think, I think, <laughs> I'm in trouble with both genders. <laughs> I mean, I think that, that what you're talking about is playful... Um, yeah. Playful physical touch. Yeah, which can I, I be mean, good. Also, but you know, a shoulder rub and you know, just stroking the back of her hair or stroking her shoulder or you know, slipping your arms around yeah. her waist and not going lower or going higher. I mean, yes. all that kind of affection is beautiful and and a climate of that. I mean, holding her hand. So many women are starving out there, telling me their husbands don't hold their hands. I mm-hmm. just that's so. Sad. Sad to me. Or even sitting next to each other when you're watching TV, putting your arm around her. Yeah. Um, for men, one of the things I encourage my clients to do is that there are times where you go into a physical, affectionate encounter with your wife, a back massage, for instance, mm-hmm. and you don't expect sex at all. Mm-hmm. And you are there, trying to give. And that there are times where you may have to say, be the one that kind of dictates that we're not going to have sex. This is just to be romantic and, and mm-hmm. affectionate. Yeah. Right. Not I definitely not all the time and not even often, but there has to be times where you accept the no really well um, mm-hmm. and that you're physically affectionate in a way without that expectation yeah. that sex that sex is going to happen and that you don't rush into it. I think that may be what I would encourage in that discussion. Right. And then, you know, like, like Lori <laughs> says, spank her as she's going down the hallway, but only if she likes that kind of thing. Yeah, not, yeah not a lot she, of women don't. Okay, not, okay. If, not if she does it. Okay, we know. <laughs> Thanks for listening. This is Four Play Radio Sex Therapy with your sex therapist, Lori Watson, and couples therapist, Dr. Adam Matthews. Hey, help us stay on top here at Foreplay. We'd love it if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. And please take one sec and rate and review us. Thanks so much.